complex and rejigger and restructure it. So if you guys have one of those scenarios, don't be afraid to give me a call, reach out, and we can see how we can kind of mold it to work with our policies, is how I like to put it. Yeah. So, I'm just gonna extend the screen here. So you were in equitable before, right? Yeah, yeah I was at equitable. Yeah, that's why you put more new stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, I, I, uh, my buddy gets my emails from EQ, and then he forwards it directly. He's like, hey man, I still think you're in my eye. Yeah, exactly. I did that one. So. Yeah, yeah. And then when he says, like, hey, I'm taking your deals by where I'm I'm like, screw you, man. Is that Alex? Or? It's Alex, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I trained him too, but he's, he's such a nice guy. He always mm. joke around. <laughs> friendly competition. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys have my information, but really at Home Trust, we do everything from A to B to revolving credit. Our bread and butter is our B side, our classic side. Yeah. Um, and I'll kind of focus on that today, and then maybe next time when we have a bigger crowd, we can focus a bit more on the A side. But really, I think B is a bit easier just because with refinances, people trying to requalify, very tough to get 39, 44, yeah. right? And is, it, is the A side, is it only insured? Or? At the moment, yes. Yeah, right. So it is gonna, uh, there's something in the works where we're going to have a prime uninsurable product coming out hopefully in the next year. We're, it's still kind of in like beta testing. We're trying to figure out what is going to help the clients most, how we do financing, um, what we're seeing in the market to kind of adapt uh, to the A side and what we're seeing right now. So hopefully that comes out in the next few months. Uh, when it does, I'll make sure to send you guys a huge marketing email. You guys are going to get all the details. But right now, it's it's pretty black and white on the right side. Yeah. So. Most important thing to remember is B side is classic, super easy yeah. to remember. And these are just a couple of bullet points. You'll probably see most of it on that email that Greg sent out. Um, where we really shine are the complex ones. So for, for us, I'd say 80% of our deals is business for self applicants. So those guys that don't have two years uh, business history, you know, they're fresh into the industry or fresh into a business they've been active for a year, maybe six months. Uh, we do need them to be active for at least six to get them done on the BFS side or classic side. Um, and it also kind of depends on the industry. So if you get someone who just started a business, let's say an Uber driver, Lyft, really there's no barriers to entry. So those businesses, no questions asked, you can start that anytime you want. But let's say it's a big business, a huge manufacturer that just started six months ago, those, because they're generating such large profits, typically, those ones we would like to see a year. Uh, we can make an exception if they do have previous history and like manufacturing or anything like that, but it all comes to the rationale. So really what we're looking for on the classic side is just a storyline. Yeah. We see a lot of uh, truck drivers. Um, yes. yeah. so, so that's my favorite answer. So okay. truck drivers, uh, that one too doesn't really have much barriers to entry. Like a lot of people, I think you just have to get your license. So those we can get done if they just started. Um, they don't even need to have a real background in truck driving. I mean, if they were an Uber driver at one point, or they decided to go from IT to truck driving, I think that's totally fine still. Um, with truck drivers, they need to be operating for at least six months. Uh, and there's two ways you can structure it. They're either they own their own company, so they have their own truck, mm -hmm. um, or they're kind of like an employee, a contractor. Right. So for, for those types of, I guess, depends which one it is, but the way we would structure it is different. Although it's the same industry, the way we state the expenses really depends whether they're an employee or a contractor right. or if they're a full-fledged operations. Corporation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So to give you guys an example, Let's say someone's a truck driver for Planning Group Incorporated. You know, they're a contractor. A lot of companies pay for their contractors' expenses, like fuel. Yeah. Shay, we've done a few. That's a big one. Yeah. Um, in those cases, we could probably use 90% of the income that's coming into their account. Mm -hmm. That's because the company that contracts them is likely paying for the fuel, um, dispatch fees, parking fees, whatever that may be. But if it's a big operation and they own the actual company and they're the ones that contract drivers out, typically in those situations, it's gonna be much more expenses. So you do have to get kind of an understanding whether they're, they're the 
corporation and is a company that's hiring the drivers, or if they're just a contractor driver for the company. So it depends. I was saying six months. So on our classic side, with business for self applicants, like I said, you don't need the two years history. Um, you do need a strong story or at least just a background on them. Uh, for income verification, a few ways to get it done. You guys can do T1 generals, which is pretty common on the A side. Um, you can do uh, financials, which for business for self guys, don't always show the most income. A lot of people who are incorporated are smart enough to write, write off their expenses. Yeah. That way they don't get taxed a lot from the government. So I usually try and stay away from financials, but in some cases there might be some big companies with really good financials. If you do have financials, that is the easiest way to get approved. It's literally one document, yeah. state it on your application, we'll look at it, make sure it matches what we see, and it's approved. Would you, if we're using financials, like corporate financials, would you need one year or two? So financials usually show two years. Right. Oh, yeah, we'll show the previous year. It'll show the previous year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we just need one set of year end financials. It'll show two years. Yeah. Now, what we look at is the consistency from 2020 and 2021. Let's say we get 2021 year end financials. It'll show 2020 numbers. If there's a, a discrepancy, um, it's not, we, there won't be any red flags. It's more so, like I said, just a story or rationale as to COVID. Exactly. COVID. <laughs> I don't know, they had family issues, they had to go away for a bit, come yeah. back, they had to sell or, or purchase a big machinery, which is um, something you don't really see from a business. It's usually, you buy equipment that lasts for 30 years. Yeah. That might've been one big purchase, which dropped their net income for the year, but it's not something we'll see the following year because it's one big purchase. Yeah. So again, it all comes back to story. Uh, I am a storyteller, so <laughs> you guys can come to me. Uh, and I'll kind of help you out with the rationale. Obviously, we need to get the clients on the same page, but I can give you an idea of what the underwriters can ask. And that's kind of the biggest advantage of going to your media. So uh, just to get back to this, uh, the most popular way to verify income is bank statements. Mm -hmm. So we call that the stated income program. So they need to be operating for six months and we get six months of bank statements. Um, what we do is we look at the deposits We'll annualize it. So let's say you have a truck driver, they deposit 10K a month, that's 120K for the year on average. Then again, you have to figure out how the, the business operates. Are they a contractor for a company or do they own the actual corporation? After that, you can kind of figure out how the expenses are gonna go. Is it gonna be they own the corporation, probably a lot of expenses, or are they a contractor with minimum overhead? Um, after you ask a few questions, um, uh, with your clients, you then whatever deduct those expenses, you determine the net income, and that's what we use for qualifying. So, the flexibility of the stated income program is that we don't verify the expenses. Again, it's really just based on your rationale or your story. Um, of course, the underwriter is going to look at the debits. So, if you see like a pre authorized debit, uh, a car loan, that's the only way we can tell if there's an actual fixed expense. Yeah. Aside from that, if the numbers are switching every month, it's a variable expense. We just need a rationale behind it as to why we're using X amount for the year. So that's the benefit of using stated income program. A lot of flexibility to play with the expenses. Um, second are investors. That's another big niche. So a lot of lenders have a max door restriction. With us, we don't care how many rental properties they have. They could have 10, 20 for all we care. The only thing that matters is that debt services. So if you have a very wealthy client, has 20 investment properties scattered throughout BC, we can still get it done. It's just obviously we have more documentation for you because you have to source each property. Um, but there's no restriction there for us. You just need to make the, the numbers work. Make sure the TDS is below 60%, which is our maximum. Yeah. If you can get the TDS below 60, they can have 20 properties, we'll get it approved. Mm. Okay. Another huge selling point is that with rental properties, we can do 80% home to value. A lot of model lines, Equitable Bank, for example, caps it at 75. Right. I don't know if that's changed. Do you guys know yeah, Equitable Max 75. 
perfect. So I think we're probably one of the only lenders that can go up to 80% loan to value on a rental property. And there's no max loan amount. So you can have a mansion somewhere in West Bath, rent it out, you can get you 80%. As long as the numbers work. As long as the numbers work, again. Uh, and then third, I'd say is no minimum FIFO scores. So those are clients that obviously have bruised credit. They can have an active consumer proposal. Uh, case by case, we'll look at bankruptcies. Uh, really depends what it involved. If it involved the mortgage, 50-50 chance. Yeah. And that's just because it's it's a risky deal for any lender but, if someone had a previous bankruptcy. Yeah. Right? So, uh, but again, talk to me about the situation. If you can kind of massage it in, make it look good to the underwriters, we do have a chance I can escalate it, but it's really 50-50. Uh, for no minimum FICO score, this also includes new to Canada applicants. So if you have someone that just came here to BC, they don't have a Canadian citizenship or a permanent residency, we'll consider them if they have a work visa. So that's all that's required. Do they have to be working towards permanent residency if they're on a work visa? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Or we, we need to just say we need to work yeah. towards it. Yeah. <laughs> that's all that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 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 So. Yeah, as long as they have a valid work visa and uh, they have a job that they've been working for a few months, there's actually no numbers. So they, they can still be on probation, which is a huge plus. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So if they're on probation still, we will still call the employer and just you know make sure they're in good standing because yeah. you never know. But that's another huge advantage. If they're on probation, they literally just started working, they're a month in, we still take the income. We just call the employer, and just get a pay stub to make sure he's he or she is receiving money into the account. So those are kind of the three big ones. Business for self-applicants, think about the stated income program. They don't need to be a business operating for years. Literally six months is what we, uh, we really look for. Um, and if you get an understanding of the business, you come to me and I'll help you structure it so that way we can sell it to the underwriter. Uh, and then second to recap, investors, no max store limits, they can have as many properties. We can do 80 loan to value. And third is, yeah, no minimum FICO scores. So no permanent residency, citizen, Canadian citizenship, just a work visa and we're good to go. Um, so that's what we really, um, that's where we really shine. So to be upfront with you guys, Home Trust is not a rate competitor. We've never been known for having the lowest rates but what I can say is when you get the commitment, we'll fund the deal. So you can rest assured that, you know, first or last option, we'll get it done. Mm -hmm. But I just want to be upfront. I can do my best to try and get the lowest rate, but just compared to some, some of the other guys, it's, it's, it's hard to compete with. Um, to give you guys an idea, our rate right now is 599 yeah. on a one-year term. Uh, and then that depends on the complexity of, of the deal. Yeah. So. If you do have a private deal, um, I always say we're probably your next best bet before you go private. Yep. We save a lot of deals. To this date, I can honestly say I've probably saved 50 deals that were gonna go private. Yep. And we were able to get them a better rate, probably six and a half percent, but still much better than paying interest only payments on what, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12%, yep. right? So come to us. And we're a legitimate B lender, so if you try to get them to the A side after the fact, much easier. You, you can't go private to A, right? You have to come to B to A. So with us, we can get it done, and then next year you can look at getting an A rate if it finds can qualify on the A side. Any questions? Love talking here. No. Yeah, you guys are good? Yeah. So I'll go into this next. Just because this has been selling like hotcakes, hmm. Um, a lot of clients are stuck in a five-year term right now at like 2% with TD or Scotia. Uh, they obviously don't want to refinance and screw up the rate. So our equity line visa has been selling like crazy. You probably get on average 10 to 15 applications each day just on our equity line visa. Uh, the equity line visa, why it's so special is that we can go in second position behind any bank. Uh, any bank that's not private, obviously, and that's not a reverse mortgage. Mm. So if you want to go behind a PMO, RBC, TD, Scotia, um, even the monolines, equitable, 
Haventry, Optimum, RFA, XMC. We can go behind all those guys. So if they have a great race, don't ruin it by doing a refinance. Get a revolving credit behind their first position. And it's revolving credit, so if they want to use it, pay it down and use it again. Great for renovations. Maybe down payment on a big purchase that's coming up or an investment property. Our visa goes up to a million dollars. So it's quite good. Um, and, and LTV? LTV, so that depends. Um, the loan to value max is 65% of the property. But with the first position mortgage, combined is 80. Yeah. So if they already have a mortgage with TD at 60%, then our ELB can only add on an additional 20. So 80% between first and second. Uh, there's no annual fee, no foreign exchange fee, so they actually get a physical visa card. They can go <laughs> shopping in the States. You know, if they want to go to Portland, rack up some, some money over there and start shopping, they can use this credit card. Uh, they also get rewards. So it's, it's like a HELOC, but also has credit card benefits. They get points, no annual fee, no foreign exchange fees, um, but you can go to a million dollars. There's no credit card out there that will go to a million dollars. Let's go to this one. These are just some examples that you could use or ways to sell it to your clients for, for that green line visa. Uh, operating line, good for BFS clients. They need extra cash to purchase inventory or equipment. Um, great for Bruce credit applicants. It shows on the Equifax. It shows on Equifax. So if they need to build their score up from five to 600, they can continue to use the Visa card. Um, and hopefully again, we can try and get them to the A side eventually. Uh, home renovations, the million dollar cap helps with that. So if they want to do big renovations, like I said, million dollars and pay it down, they can use it again. Um, and everyday expenses. I've done a few deals just for tuition, um, traveling, things of that sort, new child coming in, they need the extra money to you know, set up their, their home. So tons of ways to use it. And what I'll do, what I'll do today is I'll send everyone a feature sheet on that Green Line Visa. I don't know, Shay, if you have it already? I don't think so. Okay. And I, this is for the visa. This is for the visa, yeah. So you can use it so many ways. And if they don't use it, they're not charged a penny. So there's no, like I said, there's no maintenance fee. There's no, um, how do I say it? Some credit cards have like a, have a fee where if you don't use it for a certain period of time, they might charge you. I've seen that for a couple of credit cards. I used to have it on my Dan City Visa card. But with this, there's no dormancy fee. There's no dormancy yeah, right. fee. So if they don't use it, like I said. But do you charge the application fee? Right? We do, yes. So we charge a 2% fee. If we go in second position, that's again, because we're going in second. And it's split down the middle, so you're paid for the mm -hmm. one percent yeah. on the balance. And on a million dollar balance, if you can get it done, that's a big payday, right? Mm -hmm. So if even if they take money or no, you, you get two percent hold. Exactly, yeah. There's some banks. I think TDE they only pay you on the uh, balance. With us, it's the limit. Mm -hmm. You don't need to use it. You still get your commission. Yeah. I'm going down to the next one. So it's not on here just because it's a special program we offer. Uh, this is the second biggest thing that we're, we're seeing a lot of. So the second biggest thing we're seeing right now among us is just the issue with qualifying. Just because rates are going up, a lot of people aren't able to get into those 39-44 ratios on the A side. Um, even getting within 50 TDS is tough nowadays. Mm -hmm. So we have a non-conforming product. So their non-conforming product, you cap the loan to value at 65%, your TDS can be 100, okay. 150. So um, with that specific product, we do look for liquid assets. So we do wanna make sure the client has enough funds to last them for the next two years. Uh, a rule of thumb that I have, it's not a policy thing, it's what I've trained my brokers, is when we do a non-conforming deal, we want to look for at least two years of mortgage payments in liquid assets and property taxes. The good thing about that is it's much lower than what competitors can offer. Usually they ask for like 25 to 50% of the loan amount in liquid assets. That could be a big chunk. Mm -hmm. Million dollar mortgage, 50%, they're looking for 500K in liquid yeah, assets. That's more for rich people who don't have a job. Exactly. That's like next to impossible. 
mean, we live in Vancouver, GBA, Surrey, have that type of cash, I mean, you're a millionaire. So uh, with our product, you can get away with as little as 50 to 100K, depending how large the loan amount is. Um, again, it's all based on the rationale, and that's why you guys come to me, and I can help you guys out with those types of deals. Um, any questions so far? Is that just for owner-occupied, or is it for rentals as Everything. well? Everything. Owner-occupied and rental, it's only for purchases. Okay. Um, not refinances. So if you have clients who are retired, are sitting in cash, maybe not even a lot of cash, 100K, uh, they want to pull some equity out, um, or sorry, no, no, no. A retired couple is trying to purchase a new home, yeah. um, and they have some assets that they're sitting on, 100K, that is a scenario we can do. And that's someone who has only pension income. Um, it could even be someone who solely survives on the rental income. Hmm. They don't work, they own five rental properties, they've accumulated 100K in cash, they wanna purchase another rental, that's another deal we can see on our non-conforming hmm. side. So that'd be 100K after the down payment's made. Correct, yeah. yes, yes. So 35% down, and if they have 100K, Left they over. can make that deal yeah. work. And the TDS can be, like I said, 100, 200%, which is unheard of in our space. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the two big things. Really, it's the equity line visa. That's going to save your clients from doing a refinance right now and getting them out of that nice rate they might have with the big banks. And then the second is a non-conforming. So people who just can't qualify uh, are non-conforming. You can give them a shot if they do have some additional funds on the side. I'll leave that open for Q&A. Mm -hmm. If you guys need anything or if you guys have a scenario or something you ran into this week, anything that's kind of, or for, for you, anything that you feel like you're kind of confused with in the market, it could be about home trust or anyone, really. Yeah, um, good questions are always around. You know, anytime you hear a industry term, like it's a good time to find out what it, you know, exactly. find out what it means. You know. Yeah, there's so much lingo out there too, especially if you're a new broker, it's hard to remember. When I first started in the industry, I was just like, what if, what if? For the longest time, I, I didn't have the guts to speak up about what's a sliding scale. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? Me too. I, I, when I first started, I was like, what the heck is a sliding scale? This is what I was told in ammo at the time, a sliding scale. Let me call the underwriter about that. It takes time, but yeah. it, it comes. The funny part is I just came to know about it today. Yeah, we yeah. were, <laughs> were talking about it because I know it's, it's something that brokers hear, but they, they probably don't uh, they feel, yeah. feel embarrassed to ask, yeah, well, what is that? And also credit questions. score, how come like we have so many names? So you have Beacon score, there's FICO. credit score, there's yeah, FICO. Like, is FICO the American like term? One. I don't even know what the appropriate term is. I use FICO, Beacon score. Um, it's interchangeable. Yeah, same. kind of If you same. say someone say FICO, you, you they know. kind of... No, because when you said FICO, I Google, okay. That's <laughs> Beacon score, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, there's... Um, does TransUnion use a different term? Like, is Beacon just Equifax, or? They do use a different term. I don't know exactly what it is. They might, they might be FICO, I don't know. Because we always take Equifax, that's another thing. We don't right. take TransUnion, right. only Equifax. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what lenders do take TransUnion. Do you know any? So, um, I think Scotia will, because I think internally they use TransUnion. Yeah. Why, which is why they can come up with different scores than the broker does. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, so Equifax is always the euro we need. Yeah. Um, just be careful if you do pull a TransUnion, those are typically higher than an Equifax. Mm. So just be cautious with that. Yeah. If you're trying to pre-approve a client, you've got their TransUnion, be safe and pull an Equifax instead because that's usually more accurate score or what most lenders use yeah. with the exception of Scotia. Um, so when in doubt, get an Equifax, your, your client might give you a TransUnion. That's great as well because even though it's like a, what we are trying to pull out is the credit history, they, they use a different algorithms. And yeah, they like use that. different scoring yeah. things and I don't know, I guess Equifax is more reliable, I guess. It's, because uh, yeah, most of the time they use it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? But sliding scale, I'll get back to that. Sliding scale for us at Home Trust. There isn't one, is there? <laughs> there is now. So oh. this is a new thing. So. I was a bit upset about this when we had a meeting last week. So we at, we implemented a sliding scale. Uh, we go 80% loan to value up to 1.5 million. 
and then the remaining amount after that 1.5 is 65. Oh, it's better than 50. It is, yeah. So up to 1.5, we use 80%, the rate remaining at 65. Um, but are you going there, you know, are you doing that right now or no? We are doing that now, yeah. yeah. That wasn't the case back then, but they implemented it, and I think it could because appraisals are coming lower yeah. across the province. I don't know if, you, if you've guys seen that. Oh, yeah. yeah. The last couple of months, those nuts. We did a, a deal in April. We tried to do a refinance, and the property value dropped by 200000 Yeah. In a few months. It's pretty scary. Been seeing that. So yeah. just keep that in mind. I think that's why we're trying to adapt to those kind of situations and kind of limit our risk, our exposure in the market. Mm. Um, on that note, too, we also have approved appraisers. Yeah. So we go to certain people. We have a list that I can provide you guys. Mm -hmm. We don't accept appraisals from just anyone. Yeah, and that's true of just about every every lender. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I know EQ, I think, has a list, if not mistaken. Um, All the A lenders have approved lists. The privates, yeah. some privates only allow one. Really? <laughs> yeah, reliable mortgages, they use Lawrence and Walker only. Yeah. Lawrence and Walker is a popular one. Well, yeah. Or yeah. Adlo. Or Adlo, yes, that's a really Adlo. good one too. Yeah. Do you guys have any idea what privates, like what's the lowest rate you guys get on a private today? Actually, uh, like a PY, PWR. PWR? Yeah. Almost same like a home trust. No way. Well, well about 60 percent. Yeah. 60 or 50 percent? Well, 60, 60, 65 makes no 65, you'll get their lowest rate, which is probably 795. 795. At the time, home trust was Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. With certain deals, sometimes if it's a very messy one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never seen a 795 with us. Maybe no. a 725. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The privates seem to have lagged a bit in raising their rates, but it's starting to happen now. Yeah. Like when all the fixed rates were coming up, the private rates were staying the same, but they've, they're starting to come up in the last month or two. That's good, because I think in, in June, June and July were probably our slowest months, and I think it's because of privates at one point. I heard you've been offered two months ago, I think they went as low as six and a half. That would have been like VWR or yeah, something like that. Yeah, six and a half or something like that at yeah. 50 they've, or 60 loan to value. They have finally started raising. Yeah, yeah, so for us to be at 599, <laughs> and then at six and a half with no documents needed, you'll take the path of least resistance, right? It's, yeah. But thank God they're moving up. Starting so to change. Now. Yeah. Good, good. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what I'm seeing in the market so far. So just a few things. Um, appraisal values mm -hmm. going down. Rates may still continue to go up. We haven't budged yet. I know banks just, or some auto ones just bumped their rates this week. Mm. Um, so they're a bit closer to us now, which is good. So I think that's why we've seen an increase in our pipe. Closing the gap, yeah. Yeah, there, we, I don't see us increasing well, the rate. Well, five-year fixed, un, you know, um, uninsured or five and a quarter, five and a half. Yeah, it's not much. <laughs> and like, if they're still using a stress test on that, there's no way they're gonna get ratios in line. No, no, because that's, no now, now you're over seven for qualifying. <laughs> Nuts. Yeah. Nuts. So B side, like I said, we do have an A side, but I just wanted to, you know, I don't want to leave it for yeah, a bigger group. For, for another time, because yeah. I think right now B side is probably where the market's going, just in terms of qualifying. So mm -hmm. I think this is something you kind of want to focus on for now. Um, but my experience has always been in the B space. Yeah. So whether it's us or EQ, you guys are always welcome to ask. Mm -hmm. If you kind of want to get some inside information on what some of the other guys are doing, yeah. I try my best to, if we can't do it, I'll put you guys in another direction that uh, of some other lenders that might make it. Mm -hmm. I do have my connections and I have a list of what we can and what other lenders can do. So I appreciate it if you can just reach out to me first. If you can't do it, I'll make sure to send you to another lender that I think can. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, with the way the market is changing, um, has any bright ideas come out that you've heard of about, you know, where the business is going to be, uh, yes. like where where the activity is going to be for mortgages, refis. Uh, I think we touched on. Yes, yes. Well, in terms of us just trying to adapt, it's more so the sales team trying to make changes happen. Um, in terms of qualifying, we're trying to maybe do an extended amortization, hmm. a variable rate, so that way on the, the stress, stress test, test yeah. plus two, it's a little bit lower. 
uh, those are the two big ones that uh, myself and my colleague are escalating the most because nowadays, even at 60 TDS, there's still a bucket of people that can't make it. Yeah. Um, and until the market cools down or uh, prices go down more enough where it kind of matches the rates, it's, yeah. it's a tough market for some time to stay. Yeah, we just have to hope for wage inflation to keep up with yeah exactly they, they rate need inflation. to bump it up yeah i was going to eat dinner last night at one of my favorite restaurants and all the prices went up by five dollars and i was like oh mm. my god yeah, i've noticed it and yeah yeah, yeah. And i love my dessert too i go to the same <laughs> dessert spot every week went up by three dollars and i've been going there for 10 years wow. and i was like yeah. what the heck not to be cheap because three dollars not much but if you're going there every week it, it adds up yeah it adds yeah, you notice it. And, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You'll notice high prices in Hawaii it's too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our current Canadian dollars have been pretty yeah, cheap. Exactly. And we're in Maui, so she 